It began its life at Bell Labs in the early 1970s, won the endorsement of AT&T, and was adopted by universities around the country who appreciated its portability and its multitasking talents. One of the earliest centers of Unix development is the University of California at Berkeley, responsible for one of the main branches of Unix called BSD for Berkeley Software Distribution. The Unix operating system has special appeal to programmers because of its many programming tools. But here's the thing, so the Unix model, the Unix philosophy is this, is everything is a file which is incredibly simple assertion, but very, very difficult to implement and amazingly powerful in practice. So a file on the file system is a file. Devices are files, which means when you're doing programming on Unix, um, you've got a really lovely logical model. Processes are files. So most of these things are uh, directories, and each directory represents a running process. The late 60s, Multics was started and was going to be the next big operating system that was going to be useful for everything, became too big, too complex, and in the end, used fail. Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie were part of the project and uh, well when they failed they had nothing to do so they went to play with a PDP-7 and well we everybody knows what happened next. Uh, Unix was born but they had a big difference that Unix was much much simpler. So why was Plan 9 started by the same people that created Unix? Well Unix started to grow and grow and get more complex. Unix was not designed to, to work in a network time environment. It, Unix was decided, designed as a time sharing system where all the users were in a single system. Plan 9 took three ideas and built the whole system on top of them. They are slightly based on the ideas of Unix. Everything is a file. In Unix everything was a file except well some files were slightly different to special. So now in Plan 9 all the files are exactly the same and all the files you can make the same operations. So actually, many things are thought more as a file tree than as a single file. And you can have different files that will give you a total interface to all the uh, workings of the interface you want to export. Then we take these files and we have a file system protocol that works transparently over the network. And that works both locally, remotely, uh, and, and for all these files. This is the NP protocol, and, and that's what gives you the network transparency to all resources, not just to the ones that are designed to have a specific protocol. Once you have these two things, you have a third thing that puts the whole idea together, which is the private namespaces. Private namespaces, every process can, not necessarily, they can share a namespace, but every process has its own view of all these resources. Because if you have a huge network or a set of networks, you cannot impose the same view on, on every user because they are not interested in seeing everything. Inferno is an operating system uh, for grid and distributed computing. Grid computing is essentially the idea that you can connect multiple heterogeneous systems together uh, that can be anywhere. The nuance of Inferno, which we haven't quite gotten to yet, is that it was in some ways uh, targeted towards a very primitive version of the early like IoT paradigm. It was designed for embedded systems that Alcatel Lucid put out and the main reason that Styx uh, as a protocol was used was because you could express local resources. Inferno's goal was to further reduce the target for those problems to a very small set of problems where all you need to do is implement the Styx protocol and some basic authentication functions and you can interact with any resource on any system that you can form a connection to. In say Plan 9 or Inferno, uh, if you do something like mount a disk somewhere or a serve file somewhere, that only exists in that process and for its children. This is where the power of composition of things like Inferno comes from, is because since all the Infernos do the same stuff in different places, they can grid together really easily by just muxing resources in this way. Files can be exported, shared, authenticated for use. Inferno instances can mux each other. Inferno instances can run on anything key on. Uh, it doesn't really care what it's running on. Uh, so you get meta programming with meta abstractions. You, you get the ability to use the abstractions that exist all the way up the stack um, without really any cost. 